Uh, the Snarl, though, will not be able to drop its special attack because of that cover cloak. That's a huge thing. As well as that Icy Wind won't lower the speed on the Calyrex either. Uh, so Wolf has that in his favor. It won't be able to drop much, but they can definitely deal out some damage. So we'll see that Fluttermane and that Chiyu start coming out from here for me in game one of this series. Going up against this Rillaboom and Urshifu over on Wolf's end. No fake out pressure, which you would normally think that you see that Rillaboom, considering the Fluttermane does have that ghost type and the Covert Cloak onto the Chiyu. So neither way to really stop either option, but the Urshifu definitely can deal out a bunch of damage. Yeah, the, the Rillaboom here is very pressured, you know, from that Chiyu, the heat wave, all the overheat that could come out from that. That Pokemon so has to be careful here not to take one of those big attacks but instantly seen here for me not want to keep it on the field preserve it for later and switch it straight out you definitely don't want to be the wrong side of a surging strikes there. So the Urshifu will be joining the field over on Hirofumi's end. It's Drassalization. We're starting this battle out right, and it will be that Rillaboom into the fire type. If there was going to be something like a heat wave that was going its way, this would now be resisted. But instead, the Chiyu leaving, still great defensive type just to have down that road. But the protect on the Flutter main means that no damage, at least from that Rillaboom, will go its way. The Urshifu would have normally been able to hit through that, but it's going to protect as as well as the wood hammer is going to be null and void. Yeah, a little bit cautious from both players here, not wanting to commit too hard, but Wolf going hard on that terrestrialization with the Rillaboom, kind of wanting to avoid any threat from that Chiyu. Hirofumi playing very well, switching in the Rillaboom, uh, the Urshifu on the opposite side of the field, now pressures that Rillaboom, does have to be careful around those grassy glides that could potentially come out, do some big damage in that wood hammer, but you do have a way to really damage that Rillaboom now with that surging strike, and because of the focus sash that the Urshifu has on Hirofumi's side of the field, in a pretty comfortable position here, so does Wolf readjust maybe keep that Rillaboom for later when the Chiyu reappears um, and then you try and utilize your Urshifu in some sort of way to get some damage at least onto the Fluttermane. A little tricky because at the same time this Rillaboom could pressure so much if you want to save it for later it is something that has to be swapped out. So the Rillaboom is going to be sticking around, the Urshifu will be the one making its leave as Calyrex will be joining out onto the field. The Calyrex Shadow Rider can definitely be putting a lot of pressure but it could be taking some hits along on this turn. Yeah, that's the thing, and we are going to see just an Aqua Jet into that Calyrex, doing some nice, notable damage there, uh, returning with the Grassy Glide from this Rillaboom into the Urshifu, below 50%, and the Moonblast following up into Calyrex, something probably Wolf doesn't really want to see too much of, that Calyrex taking a lot of damage before he's restricted his main kind of powerhouse Pokemon, and this Fluttermane still uh, undamaged here, in a pretty comfortable position. The Urshifu going to be threatened the next turn by the Grassy Glide, of course, so Hirofumi has to be aware of that, uh, but this Fluttermane in a nice position to just continually go for maybe another Moonblast into the Calyrex's turn. Wolf back a little bit against the wall and doesn't want to lose the Restricted too easily. Especially too with this Fluttermane, it's maybe you don't have the super effective button, but Calyrex having taken so much damage on the swap and definitely doesn't fare in well. At least you do have a nice potential swap in with this Incineroar to maybe take that hit as well, but you also know when you are staring down the Urshifu, you need to then check it with the Rillaboom at the stage. And if you go for the Fluttermane, well, it can start to fire back with a lot of damage. So Calyrex, gone. Bringing on to the field, it will be the handy, the absolute favorite, the Incineroar, the Feisty. That will be the Intimidate going down on the Urshifu. It does want to go for the Surging Strikes. That won't matter, but it would affect for a close combat. And this Aqua Jet. Yeah, it's kind of the Incineroar's being used as a bit of a sponge here. We are going to see that followed up by a Dazzling Gleam. Rillaboom taking that so well now. Not a super effective attack. Taking the advantage, though, to get a big Wood Hammer off while the opportunity is there. Taking down a key component of Hirofumi's team. We're looking at the flutter main and the pressure that it had onto the damaged Calyrex, but if you can fire off one fantastic wood hammer into it, eliminated. Fantastic way to make sure that horse, despite the amount of damage, can stay safe. And now you do have the fake out pressure on this next turn with the Incineroar having just swapped in. Yeah, and the Chiyu has a little bit of a harder time coming in now because we know it's got the Snarl, it's got those two fire attacks as well. Not really going to be effective against the Rillaboom or the Incineroar. Calyrex, if it is in the back for Hirofumi, could be that Pokemon that comes out onto the field now. It is going to have a hard time, but it is not waiting his time. Uh, the Chiyu coming out onto the field, that Beads of Ruin activated once again. I mean, looking at this, it is something that can try and chip away, but I'm looking at just this Urshifu instead. It is still problematic that the Rillaboom over on the other end can just be pressuring into it. And I think despite the fact that we saw the terrestrialization from Wolf on that very first turn of the match, in this situation now, it's exactly how it should be.
Yeah, and I think the one thing you would say that the Chi is in a position where it's not really going to be getting that much damage off, but the, the Urshifu is so threatened by the fake out pressure there and then the follow up from the Rillaboom. That's why we're seeing it force off the field and we are going to see the Raging Bolt. Interestingly enough, that Herofumi has not brought their Restricted to this match, relying on that Raging Bolt instead. It's a bold choice, but when I'm looking at the situation and just how outsped it is and how much pressure it could be taking, I definitely don't mind it. And that's going to be a Pokemon, this Raging Bolt, that takes this hit coming out so much better. The attempt at a Parting Shot into the Chiyu going to be nothing this turn since the Little Fish did opt to protect. But now I'm looking at this Raging Bolt and the pressure that can start to output. Since it is that Life Orb, so you will be able to actually threaten some damage, especially since you do have that Beads of Ruin on the field that will furthermore help out. Yeah, and especially when you consider the Terrestrialization on the Raging Bolt, it is that Electric type, so paired up with that Life Orb, it is really going to start to threaten the Rillaboom. It has got the Assault Vest, but it's not really going to be able to take too many attacks. That Incineroar now is very threatened. With the Beads of Rune also boosting the power of those attacks coming out from the Raging Bolt, this is something that Wolf needs to deal with immediately and doesn't really feel like he's got the tools present on the field right this moment. If you can't get a parting shot off into that Raging Bolt, that's going to help you Im immensely going into this next few turns. But maybe that's a target for Hirofumi in this one as we see a Snarl fight off from the Chiyu. I mean, it's not too much damage, but if there is the swap, that you would have been catching a lot of damage on a potential swap in here. But of course, the U-turn, you'll be able to have a bit of a slower pivot coming on out, so you won't be on the downside of a Snarl, but it does mean whatever is coming in is, could be taking a lot of damage. And neither of these Pokémon look too great in that situation. The Urshifu does have the Focus Sash intact, but it was still not going to appreciate a hit. Yeah, and I think the one thing here that Wolf's just found out is that the Rillaboom is faster than that, that Raging Bolt. He probably expected that U-turn to go off after the Raging Bolt had launched an attack off. Thankfully, this turn into the Incineroar, not into that Urshifu that's just come out onto the field. Say thankfully, Incineroar doesn't necessarily think feel that way as it's going to be fainted. And now we'll get to see Wolf down another Pokemon. This is giving the opportunity for something to join the field and not be on the wrong side of a hit. But at the same time, when you're eyeing up that Raging Bolt and the potential priority that it can have with the Thunderclap, that is still a lot of damage that can be threatening. And since the Frigograph wasn't brought into this match, there's no way to stop that sort of priority. No, and I think the thing now is that Hirofumi's really being very patient with choosing the Terrestrialization here. You could go for it into the Chi Yu, right? It has got that Grass Terrestrialization, would then resist the Urshifu attack it would also resist most of the majority of the time the Rillaboom attacks as well but you probably are going to see it more so onto the Raging Bolt to get that extra boost onto those electric type attacks uh, you're not really losing anything either with either way with taking any uh, advantage with losing a defensive weakness or gaining one with the electric typing you're just getting the benefit from those big powerful attacks the thing is though for wolf still has that sash intact on the urshifu which is uh, it's, uh, sorry it's been broken now which is a bit vulnerable but we are going to see because of that fake out pressure it switch out this turn the grassy glide that's going to be the hit on to the urshifu that had just swapped in and now it's going to be hirofumi down to Pokemon, Heat Wave coming on out. Rillaboom's going to be missed, but hitting into the Urshifu. That's the one I want to keep an eye on because that's the one where now the Sash is broken. Firing off a close combat into the Chiyu. We'll be taking it down, and Hirofumi, all of a sudden, it's going to be the Raging Bolt against the world. Yeah, and it feels a little bit too much for the Raging Bolt to do itself, especially when Wolf still got that Shadow Rider Calyrex in the back that can come in and kind of clean up. The Raging Bolt can come out now, can threaten, of course, the Thunderclap into the Urshifu can get some decent damage off into the Rillaboom now, a fire type. But between the three Pokemon that Wolf's got, things are looking pretty bleak for this Raging Bolt. Yeah, the I mean, the two KOs on the turn when there could have been so much pressure back with this, you're in a weird spot because, of course, you know that there is the potential of a fake out into that slot and you don't want to be taking unnecessary damage, but just going for straight up attacks, finding himself in a really advantageous against a Raging Bolt that maybe could have been quite problematic into this. Detect onto the Urshifu. The Rillaboom's going to try and take a fair fight here. U-turn to start chipping away just a little bit more. Yeah, we are going to see that U-turn pivot out, allow the Calyrex to come in onto the field. If it does take a Thunderbolt here, though, it is going to drop, but that would then allow the Rillaboom to come back onto the field, have access to that Fake Out once again, and Fake Out combination with the Unseen Fist ability on the Urshifu, something that you really want to see, get a close combat off, kind of start to close this game up, and that's exactly what we see. Thunderbolt into the Calyrex, but I don't think Wolf's going to mind at this point in the battle.
Absolutely not. He has positioned this so well, and you're going to get the perfect two Pokemon to be closing this out in the Raging Bolt. I mean, that's exactly it. You're the tallest, longest neck sitting <laughs> duck out on the field right now, and that's going to be staring down this fake out. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think you, you are pretty locked at this point because close combat is going to be enough to close this out. Wilson very well in positions where it looked a little bit dicey at times just to keep his composure, and Timey's moves so perfectly. The fake out pressure from earlier was an opening that he took, and you saw the double knockout there. So Wolf taking game one in dominating fashion say dominating, but I, when I look back at that and that Raging Bolt and the pressure that I was able to put on later in that match because the Phorograph wasn't brought, I feel like there is definitely a couple of turns in there where this could have maybe been a little bit of a different result. I think when you're looking at Wolf maybe making more of those heads up plays, I'm not going to go for this fake out instead. I'm just going for this damage. Really find himself a window of opportunity there where Hirofumi was forced to pay a little bit more defensive to not lose tools and in that lost so much more. Yeah, I think the... the, the Wolf not faltering in his con convictions was the big thing, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the opportunities when they're presented to him. The wood hammer there was pivotal. Uh, and, and also kind of fortunate as well when the really Boom went out that the Urshifu wasn't the Pokemon that was targeted that turn with the Thunderbolt from the Raging Bolt. So yeah, of course, there was a few turns in there where it could have went Hirofumi's way because the pressure was there all the time on his side of the field. But I think the way that Wolf was able to manage that pressure and obviously had a game plan coming out from the start, not worrying about, you know, using that Incineroar as the sponge almost, it's there in case the Ice Rider Calyrex comes to the battle because you need a way to lower that attack. Uh, if you look at Hirofumi's side of the field, it does have ways to kind of slow down some of the options on that special engine for Wolf, but Wolf has to use that Incineroar in some sort of way, shape or form to slow down that engine that could be there with a Calyrex Ice Rider, which doesn't seem to be the thing that Hirofumi is really favoring in this matchup. I think it's so interesting how Hirofumi didn't bring the Calyrex Ice Rider, but for Wolf, what did the Calyrex Shadow Rider do? It perished? It was kind of like the more of that fire, water, grass that was really dominating on Wolf with that constant repositioning and pressure he was able to put on. Really showcasing the strength of other Pokemon in this format. Time to see a switch up here in this game too though. And the horses make an appearance right off the bat. Calyrex Ice Rider next to that Raging Bull for Hirofumi. Calyrex Shadow Rider and Cinderor for Wolf. Yeah, it's a really nice lead and adjustment from both players here. You're going to see the Incineroar coming out for Wolf here. It is going to be able to drop and intimidate down all importantly onto that Ice Rider Calyrex because it is holding that Never Ice, Never Melt Ice item rather than what we commonly see in that clear amulet. It's really going to be something that Wolf can cycle that intimidate and slow that Pokemon down. Of course, there is the pressure there from the Calyrex Shadow Rider here where it is pressuring the Astral Barrage onto both Pokemon on Herofumi's side of the field does that force Hirofumi to go for a Terrestrialization this turn? And also, if you are Wolf, you've got the option where you can Terrestrialize your own Calyrex. But there's a bit of a double-edged sword here. Yes, you can resist the Glacial Lances with that water typing, but do you want to commit to it because you instantly become weak to those electric type attacks from that Raging Bolt? That is such a threat and something that Hirofumi does actually, I think, think is a key component in getting over the line in this battle. Well, at this point, it's going to be Calyrex leaving the field. The Incineroar does have Fago pressure on one Pokemon, and if it's going to be anything, it won't be into that slot. Chiyu rejoining the battle as well. We're talking about Pokemon that are going to be faring quite well into the Calyrex. That will be it. And the Raging Bolt, nothing this time around. Astro Barrage coming on out. Notably, too, since the Raging Bolt is built for offense, it doesn't have an Assault Vest, so it's going to be taking... With that Snarl, it's not really going to lower the special attack because of the covered cloak on Wolf's side of the field, but it does threaten with that dark type damage. You don't want to do that, and you don't want to terrestrialize. So maybe Wolf is going to adjust here, take that Calyrex out of a position where it is threatened. Maybe utilize that Incineroar, the slow parting shot. Switch out to something more favorable. Switch out with the Incineroar. You're going to avoid any damage and get something back on the field in a more preferable position to deal with these big threats here and now. And it's all where here for me wants to go on this turn too, because keeping this raging bolt in is something that it will take an astral barrage at the end of things. And if you eyed this up trying to go for a priority move, Wolf has made that adjustment into the Ferrigraph for this match. So when we're eyeing up this terrestrialization and eyeing up trying to drop this weakness to that Chi Yu, it will be that water type. So something that could have been so scary up against the Raging Bolt. Well, you have brought that perfect counter in that giraffe. No priority coming on out, no attempt. 
Astro Barrage gonna be raining havoc on both of these Pokemon. Chiyo takes the hit, Raging Bolt does not. Yeah, really great play here from Wolf, covering the threat of that Thunderclap, bringing the Furgraph in with that Armor Tail, preventing any sort of risk there. We are seeing the Snarl and how important this Covered Cloak is because yes, special attack dropping on the Furgraph, but because of that item choice, not dropping on that Calyrex, keeping the boost that it's got from knocking out the Raging Bolt, becoming a big threat early on in this match. And with Fluttermane joining the field now, you can be pressuring with the damage, and you do get the speed boost because of that booster energy, but you're not gonna be hitting for weakness into it. And again, the Cover Cloak, such a great item choice onto this. You can't even try and lower the speed. So, Wolf done a great job so far in really positioning this Calyrex Shadow Rider and actually putting a lot of pressure out. And Fragora, you swapped the priority. You did what you need to do. You don't want to get KO'd by this Chiyu. That's going to be swapped back into Incineroar. Yeah, one job it was here for, and it's done it. The Incineroar coming back onto the field now. Going to be in a more preferable position against what is the threat from these fairy type attacks on this Fluttermane and the Dark and Fire from the Chiyu. But we are going to see a Trasalization, interestingly enough, onto this Fluttermane. It is going to be a normal type. It's going to give it immunity to the Astral Barrage. Really key here in this battle against the big threat from that Calyrex. You're staring down that plus one. You don't want to be taking an attack, but don't worry, you won't have to protect from the Calyrex, making sure you're not going to be taking a hefty moon blast from the opposing end as Chiyu looking to hold on through this as well. What's notable about that Trasalization and when it's come out as well is you have now dropped that immunity to the fake out and the Incineroar is perfectly swapped in. So now this Calyrex still doesn't get threatened on this next turn. No, so the fake out pressure here from Wolf is just so well done because now, yes, you can't be hit by the Astro barrage but that doesn't matter for this next turn because you've got the fake out into that flutter man you can slow it down you can launch another astral barrage if you want into that chiyu try and remove that from the field because that is if you can remove it a huge thing for you to get one step closer to closing this match up a little roll of the dice, an attempt at a double protect, and it's going to fail. Chiyu will be taking a hit this turn. Fluttermane is going to be spared. The only damage coming out from that fake out. No damage from the Astral Barrage, but the Chiyu, it does hold on just barely. Yeah, and it did go for the double protect there. You can make, you know, you can see why you want to try and get the double protect so you avoid that Astral Barrage. It does hang on, thankfully, but it is solo health. Anything that's going to just touch it now is going to take it off the field. The Fluttermane in a position where it can potentially try and get a Moonblast off into that Calyrex, but it's easy enough for Wolf just to protect, go for a parting shot here, or maybe even just go for a damaging attack into the Chiyu, try and remove that, or just try and whittle down this Fluttermane because that's the key now. I don't think losing any position here from Wolf is the thing to do. I think just take your time and use the tools that you've got at your disposal to kind of work around Hirofumi's threats. This Flailing Fish and wanting to preserve it will be swapping out Ice Rider coming back in, especially too, if you do think it is just going to be protect on the other end and an opportunity to keep this Fluttermane nice and safe as well. Really just a preservation of the tools that they need to try and take this match out with. The Incineroar will be the only one to act the parting shot and attempt to try and lower the special attack coming out from this Fluttermane, but nothing this go around. Yeah, it's a nice play here from Hirofumi to kind of block that parting shot to at least make the, the Fluttermane still a bit of a threat this next turn. The one thing that you would say is though this Ice Rider is in a, a really bad position here because the Astral Barrage obviously boosted. It is going to hit for super effective damage. Not something that Hirofumi probably wants to deal with here. We're not seeing any protect. And Moonblast fired out from that Fluttermane. Is it fishing for a special attack drop? Astral Barrage coming out. We can't get that special attack drop. You can't get nearly enough damage. Oh. You're not getting hit, but that Calyrex Ice Rider will be holding on. No attack from the Incineroar. Again, this parting shot. We will get an opportunity to go again over on Hirofumi's end. And Wolf, this will be a force pivot on out. We've gotten to see the Pokemon. What is he going to be bringing in? One will take the hit a lot better than the other. Remember, the Frigoraf took a lot of damage earlier on. Yeah, and I think the one thing you want to avoid if you are Wolf is bringing in the Furograph to potentially get knocked out and give that chilling near boost because that's the one thing you want to avoid at all costs. You don't want to allow this Pokemon on Hirofumi's side to get any sort of foothold, any sort of advantage. So that's why we're seeing the Yoshifu come in. It is going to resist this hit. Calyrex hanging on, barely on 8 HP. And the Yoshifu taking it pretty comfortably here. 
I'm still lining up this Flutterman and the damage output that, that it can have on this turn. The Calyrex just holds on. Both of them are looking a little bit worse for wear. Yershvu joining the field. The Sash will be broken. You can be ending at least on the other end since you do have access to that priority. Yeah, and the, the thing is going for the Aqua Jet into that slot is locking that. Whatever comes in here, the Chi Yu switches in, it's going down. The Calyrex stays on the field, it's going down. Unfortunately, Wolf has got herself into a really good pin position. Then all you need to do is deal with this Flutterman. You could even go for maybe a side shock this turn into that Flutterman. Just get some, try and get some damage off before your Calyrex goes down. Maybe even switch out this turn into the Incineroar. It's a pretty safe switch when you've got the cover from that Aqua Jet. That will be the Protect to be kicking off the turn as Aqua Jet priority will eliminate this Calyrex and officially bring Hufumi down to final two Pokemon, plus a Chi Yu that's definitely not looking in the greatest shape. Dazzling Gleam, it won't do anything into the Calyrex, and since it is spread damage, it's going to be doing less, and the Urshifu is going to be holding on despite that. That would have been a fantastic KO to get, so your Chi Yu could be surviving through this, but just falling a little short. Yeah, and even if the, the Urshifu goes down here, the, the next turn comes in, you've got per potentially that fake out pressure which you could pile on to the Chi Yu, yeah. Be forcing a protect there, but I think the thing is, uh, even if Fake Out comes out into that slot, even though it's got the cover clock, you're still picking up the knockout, and then all you need to deal with is that Flutterman. So the Aqua Jet here, an easy player for Wolf. Not wanting to lose that Calyrex for free, switching it out, or importantly, bringing that Incineral back onto the field. Not gonna be as threatened as much as what was out on the field previously. Slowly but surely whittling away your Rumi's tools to try and come back into the match as officially the Chi Yu, the Aqua Jet, no chance is going to be feigning. It's now just this Terra normal Flutter main. Another round of Dazzling Gleam, the Urshifu already on a sliver of health is going to be KO'd. But now you have this Incineroar in, you have the Fake Out pressure, and you can swap back in something that can start to deal with this flutter main a little better yeah wolf's got the lock here he's got the fake out here even if the flutter main does protect you've got the option to go for the trick room with the photograph and then you're in a position where you can just close this out well and truly with that incineral photograph combination that's going to be the fake out to really make it official as for Rigoraf. That's the last thing you want to see is a booster speed <laughs> flutter main as you're going to be taking the damage going here on out. And now you can just slowly but surely play this game. There's only the one Pokemon. You're not getting too much options and a force fit protect on the last turn. No way to be stopping this barrage hits now as that double up is going to make it official. Wolf Blake is going to remain undefeated here at the Pokemon World Championships.